right, let's get started learning linear regression here in Python. To begin, let's import pandas. Let's get numpy. Let's get statsmodels.api. And we'll call that good for now. All right, let's use the same insurance data set we've been using for a while now, just to keep this first example simple. Uh, let's set this equal to pd.read csv. All right, and then the first thing I want to do is let's create a variable to store the label in. We'll make this charges. And uh, let's go ahead and um, I'll save this for the next code block. And let's just preview df, make sure that we're pulling that in OK. All right, setting up my initial machine. There we go. All right. So uh, here's our normal seven features. We're used to these. That all looks good. So now I'm going to go ahead and create my label. And uh, let's, uh, let, let's set our y and our x variables. So our y will set to df.charges. And I use a lowercase y to indicate that there's just one feature there. Capital X to indicate there's going to be many x features. We're going to, let's start by just grabbing the three numeric features up there. And so I'm filtering the data frame. That's what that double uh, double brace uh, notation indicates is that I'm just going to grab a sample or a few NBA, BMI, a few of the columns uh, and children. There we go. And now we're going to create a model object. And this will be a stats models object dot OLS. And we're going to give it two parameters, the Y and the X variables. And then we're going to save the results of what's called a model dot fit. This is what actually runs the regression calculation. Gives us the residuals, the parameters, coefficients, t-test, p-values, a whole lot of other things. And so we're going to print results dot summary is the object or method sorry that we want all right so what we get here uh, r squared of 50 almost 60 percent and you might remember when we did this in excel our r squared was only about 12 percent so let's see if we can understand what's going on here we've got adjusted r squared just like we did before in excel very small difference between them which means that each of our variables is helping quite a bit and uh, should be kept in the model. Uh, this is the F statistic of the entire model and the P value for that F statistic, which means then that our combination of variables, or in other words, our model is doing a great job of explaining a significant amount of variance in charges. Now come down here and let's take a look at the coefficients. Just like with Excel, we get a coefficient, a standard error, T value and P value, but now we also get a confidence interval. Um, actually, I can't remember. We may have had that before in Excel as well. But anyway, we just have age, BMI, and children. What's missing? What do we not have here that we did have before? You might recognize that the y-intercept is missing. That's because the way we built this, we're allowing the y-intercept, or we're forcing the y-intercept through zero. Now, that is sometimes useful for interpreting coefficients, but that's not something that we'll typically do in machine learning. What we need to do is allow it to create a y-intercept at anywhere, uh, wherever the fit is best. So to do that, uh, stats models, this particular package, just wants us to add another column with all ones in it. Now we can do that a couple different ways. We could come up here and say uh, df, and we call it const equals one. That would work, but Pandas doesn't like that technique quite as much anymore and gives us warnings occasionally. Another quick way to do that is just to say assign const equals one right here at the end of our x variable list. So it's not adding this column to the original data frame, it's just adding it to this x variable, uh, and it'll be a column called const of all ones. So run that again. 
And you'll notice, there we go, now we're getting that 12%, as well as a y-intercept with a coefficient and p-value. Now we get quite a few other things, uh, other pieces of information in here that we'll go through one at a time, but we'll save it for a little bit later. Uh, information about how well assumptions are met down here, and just some other descriptive statistics up here. For now, I'm going to assume, again, that you've been watching the prior videos in Excel or, or something else, and that you're familiar with how a multiple linear regression works. These values weren't standardized, so we can't compare and say BMI is necessarily a larger coefficient than age because they're on different scales. Same with children. However, we do have these p-values here that show us that age and BMI are quite significant. Children still below the, the 0.05 threshold. So uh, all three variables are significant, which doesn't surprise me since our R-squared and R-squared adjusted were so close together and we had a very significant p-value right here. So there are a couple of other useful uh, things that we can get, or useful features of this stats models object. So in particular, let's get some predictions. I'm going to say df and call this predictions and set this equal to uh, results.fitted values. There we go. And then let's print out the data frame. So that gave us a new column here, and these are the scored values based on this model right here above. As you can see, they're not super great. Oh, it's because our p-value, sorry, our r-squared is only 12%, and so naturally our predictions aren't going to be super accurate. Uh, the the technical definition of r-squared again is that it is the the variance in charges that are explained that is explained by this combination of features and y-intercept. Conceptually, you could consider this you know 12% better than a random guess, which isn't great, which is why these are so so far off. So uh, what we want to do is add our uh, categorical variables just like it just like we did last time to improve those a bit further. But we'll we'll hold on and save that for just a minute. Last thing I want to do for this video is just show you all right now that we've got all the predictions we can also come up with a, a single scored prediction results dot predict and we can pass in a list or a list of lists. So this would be a list of values in place of each of those uh, uh, features in our model in that same order. So for example, let's generate this prediction for the first row. Age 19, uh, BMI 27.9, and children 0. But don't forget we have to add a 1 for that const column for the y-intercept. That gets us, there we go, a predicted value, same as the one that we have right here. So just simple, using the stats models package from building the model, training it, or fitting it, and then coming up with predictions for all records and uh, an in individual model. We'll call it good for this video. And in the next, let's move on to standardizing and adding categorical features.